To set up the Protean 2 cell for casting and running of a 2D gel that fits 17 or 18 cm IPG strips, the following components are required. 20 cm notched clamps which includes both left and right clamps, foam gaskets for the casting stand, alignment card, narrow spacers, wide ceiling gaskets for the upper buffer chamber, 20 by 20 cm glass plates, and IPG combs. All of these components can be found in the Protean 2 IPG conversion kit, which can be ordered separately from the Protean 2 XI basic unit or is included if ordering the Protean 2 XL cell. To tell the difference between the clamps for the XI unit and the XL unit, look at the notched area above the arrows. The clamp for the XL cell has a thinner outer ridge, whereas the clamp for the XI cell has a thicker outer ridge. To begin assembly of the gel cassettes, lay the long outer plate down. It should be 20 cm in width by 22.3 cm in length. Place narrow spacers along the long edges of the plate. Then place a short inner plate on top of the spacers. It should be 20 cm by 20 cm. Set the whole glass plate sandwich on an even surface so that the bottoms and sides of the glass plates are flush and the short plate is facing you. Grasp the sandwich with your right hand. With your left hand, guide the left clamp, which has arrows facing up and toward the glass plate, onto the sandwich so that the long and short plates fit appropriately in the clamp. Tighten the screw at the top only enough to hold the plates in place. Now place the right clamp on the right side of the sandwich and repeat the procedure. Place the casting stand on a flat surface. Place a foam gasket in one of the casting slots. Check to make sure the gaskets are clean and free of residual acrylamide. This will help ensure a good seal. Place the assembled gel sandwich in the slot on top of the foam gasket, short plate facing outwards. Insert an alignment card between the two glass plates to push the spacers to the extreme outer edges of the glass plates to ensure maximum gel width. You may need to slide the card from side to side to properly align the spacers. Slightly loosen the clamp screws to check that the spacers are flush up against the top notches on the clamps. Simultaneously push inward on both clamps at the area around the arrows and tighten both clamp screws just enough to hold the sandwich in place. Pushing inward on both clamps at a point below the arrows will ensure that the spacers and glass plates are flush against the sides of the clamps. Remove the alignment card. Pull the sandwich from the casting slot and check that the plates and spacers are flush at the bottom by running your fingers across the contact area between the glass plates and spacers. You should not feel any indentations. If you do, you must realign the sandwich again. Place the sandwich back in the casting slot, short plate facing outwards. Orient the handles of the cams upward, push the cams in, and turn them 180 degrees so that the handles of the cams point downward. You should feel some resistance. The sandwich should now be tightly secured in the casting stand. Repeat the assembly of another glass plate sandwich. Place the assembled sandwich in the remaining slot in the casting stand so that the short plate is facing outward. Tighten the cams like before.
The sandwiches are now ready for gel casting. After the gels are cast and polymerized, assemble the upper buffer chamber by seating the wide sealing gasket onto the central cooling core. Lubricate the front of the gasket with water or buffer to help the gel sandwich slide onto the gasket properly. Lay the central cooling core down on a lab bench. If applicable, remove the comb from the polymerized gel. Release the gel sandwich from the casting stand by turning the cams to the up position and pulling them outward. Pull the gel sandwich straight out of the stand. Take a gel sandwich and with a short glass plate facing the cooling core, position the gel sandwich at an angle, approximately 20 degrees or less, so that the grooves in the upper portion of the clamps slide onto the locating pins on the central cooling core. With your fingers below the black latch on the cooling core and your thumbs resting on the clamps, gently push the gel sandwich onto the cooling core with one simple motion. Check to make sure that the upper edge of the short inner plate should be butted against the notches of the gasket and that the clamps are held securely against the black latch assemblies on both sides of the cooling core. Improper installation of the gel sandwich can result in buffer leakage during the run. Turn the cooling core over and repeat the prior steps to attach the second gel sandwich. If running only one gel, attach the acrylic buffer dam to the unused side of the cooling core. Position the acrylic plate between two clamps, either XI or XL will work, by matching the notches on the clamps to the notches on the acrylic plate, as would be done with a gel sandwich, and slide the dam up each clamp as far as possible. Failure to slide the dam up completely to the top of the clamp will result in an upper buffer leak. No further alignment is necessary.